Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, Wednesday, the 15th of April, and it's been a few days since my uh, last one, but here's the next instalment of my blog from the bog. Today, um, I want to talk about um, a couple of things, and also um, I want to talk about perspective. Um, but first of all, um, hopefully today, um, a lot of uh, businesses within uh, Thanet will have received their grant payments from the council under the business rates scheme. Uh, we thankfully got ours uh, this morning. Um, it is a very simple process now to go on and claim. Please look on the business uh, rates pages for the council's website um, and uh, it'll take you literally two minutes. You just need your business rates account number. If you're a limited company, then company registered number and address. Uh, and you will need to upload um, a bank statement for the account, um, which needs to be in the rates payer's name, um, uh, just to uh, enable the council to pay that to you. The next big thing uh, to look forward to is um, hopefully next Monday the 20th, um, HMRC are going to make live the job retention scheme portal, so you can start putting um, your claims through for the 80% um, salary contributions under the job retention scheme. Um, I've been uh, advising some clients to make sure that over that, that prior weekend, in other words, this coming weekend, make sure you have a look um, on the uh, government pages for the job retention scheme to make sure it's the latest advice. You can only claim once every three weeks. So um, if you paid your employees in March, uh, you can claim back Marches and I would suggest you do Aprils at the same time. So do a claim for March and April um, in this claim and then you can do it monthly or whatever. Uh, or if you pay your employees weekly, then every three weeks you can make a claim. Um, I also want to talk about business interruption insurance. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, problems with uh, people trying to claim under their business interruption policies and basically being told they can't. Insurers are um, just refusing point blank to pay out any claims, even if you have cover. We're dealing with a couple of cases at the moment for clients where our view and the client's view um, is that actually they should have cover and they should be paying out. Uh, but what's happening instead is the insurers are just saying no. Now the Financial Conduct Authority, so that's the regulator for the insurance industry, has published um, guidance this morning and is basically telling insurers you need to be paying out unless you've got a very good reason not to. Um, so um, certainly try and press the insurers to make that payment to you if you think you're entitled. And if they don't do so, then make a complaint to the FCA. I also wanted to talk about perspective very briefly. Um, obviously we're in the, I think it's the fourth week of lockdown now and it's, it's very frustrating. Um, people are having a lot of problems with it. But there are, Two things that put things into perspective for me today. Um, the, uh, they're both actually um, incidents which occurred 75 years ago today. Um, so 15th of April 1945, uh, one key issue uh, was that the, um, uh, the concentration camp at Bergen-Belsen was discovered by um, a British Army captain uh, by accident. He was actually looking for um, a lost armoured column and he went down a path and found some buildings and there were about 60,000 um, inmates uh, within the camp um, uh, who had just been abandoned by the Germans um, and that was uh, an event which, which affected him very badly uh, for the rest of his life um, but it also marked a new beginning for the people who had been kept in such horrific conditions uh, for so long and had seen uh, such misery. Um, another personal um, uh, memory from today, from that date, 15th of April, 1945, is that's the day that uh, my grandfather, William Edward Gardner, uh, was killed by a sniper in uh, Brinkham in Germany. Um, he was advancing with the British uh, uh, as part of the Northern Germany campaign and uh, it was his time. Uh, he was a young man uh, in his 20s um, and uh, he had uh, a daughter, my mum, who he'd never seen. 
Um, and six years ago, uh, my brother and I took our mum to um, the Becklingen uh, Military Cemetery in Germany and, and we saw the grave there. But it's always a very poignant day for us. We always remembered it from, um, you know, Remembrance Day parades and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it made it more relevant uh, seeing uh, the grave. And it's when you when you look at these sort of events that happened 75 years ago, actually, it does put things in perspective. Um, you know, if you're stuck inside your home for a few weeks. Yes, it's going to be frustrating. Yes, it's going to be boring. Yes, there are going to be other issues. Uh, there may be further issues of, you know, mental health pressures or domestic abuse and things like that. Um, and they shouldn't be viewed in any uh, with any less importance nowadays. But put it in perspective, um, things could be a lot worse and there will be an end to the lockdown and things will return to a form of normal. So hopefully um, we will catch up again soon.